you think him singing Taylor Swift songs makes him stronger or weaker? <laughs> wow. I mean, I don't know. I'm I'm not the biggest fan of like politicians making videos like that. Ah, uh, okay. I won't deny. Uh, because I'm like, okay, then then your if that I mean I get you want to show your personality and all, but I hope people also don't vote solely on personality. Mm. It's more mm. about character, lah. Correct. Uh, and character, you make a Taylor Swift video, you playing guitar doesn't doesn't mean shit to me, lah. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. This episode of the Yalabat Podcast is brought to you by Food Panda. If you've got a knack for finding lobangs and good deals, Food Panda is looking for their first ever Chief Savings Officer, or CSO as they call it. And as the CSO, you'll be their appointed bargain hunter and will be tasked with creating Food Panda centric content for their social media. In return, you'll get a six month contract valued at over $21,000 because you'll get a lot of entitlements like. $1,500 in monthly Food Panda vouchers, a free one year subscription to Panda Pro, exclusive swag and merchandise, first dips on deals, and a $2,000 monthly Food Panda Creative Fund to help you pursue your passion for creating content. So, to apply, upload a one minute video on Instagram containing a creative hack to save money on food or groceries and tag Food Panda. But do it soon because the deadline is 30th April 2024. You can find out all the info you need at the link in the show notes. And please, please do check it out. All the best to all of you trying it. And now, on to the podcast. What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Yala. Your thrice weekly podcast where we talk about the hottest news with a touch of what, Terrence? Good old humor. Good old humor, man. Yeah. Ah, what? <laughs> big, big seismic uh, changes. Huh? Yeah, yeah, which, I mean, like the first topic we're going to talk about, we found out right after, literally, when we stepped out of the studio on Monday, yeah, after minutes. finishing the podcast, right? Yeah, minutes after minutes. stepping out of the studio. Yeah. yeah, when we were thinking, oh, it's been a slow, slow local news week. Huh? Yeah. And boom. Boom. Big Drops news. like this, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But before we jump into it, how has the week been, man? Uh, I mean, yeah, rocked by this news, right? Mm. Um, I think... Uh, yeah, it's just, you know, we thought it was, the week was going to be a, you know, a bit of a chill one, slow one after mm. all the spitting at Bruno Mars and all the stuff that was going spitting on. Spitting at Bruno Mars? Yeah, oh, there was a spitting, spitting at the fan line ah, at Bruno Mars. Yeah, 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 I was like, who the fuck go and spit at Bruno Mars? I mean, someone spat at the Bruno Mars concert, la, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. True lah. Uh, fan to fan lah. Fan yeah, spit, yeah, yeah. fan spit. No, la. because you were saying fan spitting fan. at Bruno Mars. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, okay. then I was like, oh, shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh. yeah. So, so, so all that, I thought it was like dying now. Oh, then the Pope coming. Oh, okay, interesting. Uh. Interesting, but not like seismic lah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then this one, boom, just came like that. Yeah. Occupied yeah. mainstream consciousness. Uh, but did, did it occupy your consciousness? Say no way. Like you go to sleep at night thinking about Lawrence Wong? Nope. Or? No. Yeah, yeah. So we're talking about the topic already, yeah. Actually, I mean, I we mean, can just we do our little spiel before we jump in. Of course, in, of course, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm just no, I'm just asking whether it affected your sleep, lah. No, lah, no, no at all. Yeah, yeah, did it affect your sleep? No, no, not at all. I think yeah. the weather is a bigger factor in, in you know affecting my sleep, lah. Because yeah. it's actually been quite nice the last couple of days, like, Yeah, like, rain and everything. Yeah, yeah. Uh. And it's a nice like it rains early in the morning. Then mm. by the time you need to get out of the house, it kind of stops us. So it sets the mood. La. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It sets correct, the mood. Correct. But uh, it's still muggy and humid as shit. La. Yeah, yeah. And, and I think the forecast is saying that there still will be hot days but there'll still also be rain. Yeah, yeah. So it probably hot, hot as shit in the morning and then rain in the afternoon. La. Correct, correct. Or and, vice versa. And just a little bit of like, you know, the kind of gleeful excitement for us was, uh, I think now if you go on the MRT mm. and you see some, there are some Mediacorp ads around about Mediacorp Audio, Me Listen and all that. Mm. And you see a little, little poster of a little podcast show called uh, After Life Support mm. right there. So that was a little nice moment in the last few days. Mm. Like just for us to all see that little poster of that show that and we we had did. no idea, right? It we had no idea. Yeah. Serendipitous. Just uh, like just I like this spot. announcement. Right? <laughs> <laughs> no <laughs> idea. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. So if you can take a photo you can tag us tag on Instagram, us. put it on Reddit. Yeah. Uh, we already have a photo that we can put on Reddit. Yeah. Right. And um, and, and tell people about about it, lah, right? Yeah. Uh, is there a way to easily listen or it's all on the Me Listen app or something? It's on right? Me Listen app, but it's on Spotify as well. Uh, so okay, yeah, okay. after life support, check out the show that we did last year that with Joe Tan that we're very, very proud of. Hell yeah, man. Yeah. Um cool. Mm. Awesome. Uh, and what what's our what's our spiel? Uh, if you're new here, especially on, on YouTube, I know there's a lot of new people because there are a lot of people telling us to quit YouTube. <laughs> <in the comments. laughs> but if you're new here, thank you for subscribing or thank you for coming by the podcast. And please tell one person about it or subscribe or follow wherever you listen to podcasts. Yeah. 
And if you want to work with us, you can reach out or check the check. He reach out to us at ministryoffunny.com. Uh, there's a there's a field where you can enter your question, your query will be sent to our inbox, and we'll reply to you as soon as we can. Yeah. Uh, but you know, just not mentioning that there are already people telling us to quit YouTube. Mm-hmm. It feels like that's a milestone because when we reached there with Ministry of Funny, mm-hmm. it was when we started growing pretty fast, getting pretty big. Yeah, yeah. So it's like a feather in our cap. Yeah. The moment you reach a point where people are telling you to stop what you're doing, right, you might be doing something right. Yeah. It's the saying goes, you're nobody until somebody hates you. Oh, that's uh, true. Yeah. That's true. So haters, welcome as well. Yeah. Uh, welcome to our channel. Welcome to our podcast. Yes. Uh, but yeah, right back to the main news. Jumping right in. Uh. That dropped on the afternoon of Monday, 15th April. Yeah. But just to, before we start, like, I mean, um, well, what's the decision process behind, like, like, you know, we fin- just finished recording on Monday. Yeah. And this news comes out, like, right? Um, I mean, maybe we can explain your thought process a little bit or why we don't immediately want to, like, record something, even though it's such a seismic event, like. I mean, because we also have like our cadence. Of course, yes. Right? Yes. Uh, but I think it's always, because we have had this discussion in the past also, right? Yeah. Uh, I think sometimes it's nice to see what people are saying first. Because mm, mm. uh, these kind of things, you know, everybody will be jumping on the bandwagon. Yeah. Of course, to report, yes, but also a lot of jumping on the bandwagon. Yeah. So just see how things play out. Yeah. 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 Right. I mean, because some people on Reddit, uh, some commentators on Reddit did, uh, say, hey, maybe we need to have an emergency podcast to discuss mm. this. But uh, yeah, like you, like that. I mean, it, whether we discuss it today or tomorrow, I think the timing doesn't matter so much. But more is like, what's the after the aftershocks like, right, from this announcement? Yeah, but yeah. I remember like, say, just some sort of serendipitous uh, coincidence like for Israel's case. Mm. I think mm. it was on the morning of a podcast or the day before we yeah. recorded a podcast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that one, because it fits in the cadence, because... That one, it felt like, yeah, people are going to be covering it, but if we can cover it at the same time, why not? Mm, mm. I guess this one, it wasn't something that was like going to have immediate impact. Like. Mm, correct, yeah. So, so yeah, yeah. Let things sit. Yeah. Uh, but, um, yeah, so overall, before we dive into like some of the details, how you feel, Terrence? Do you feel excited about the future? Um, I think, actually, it was a little bit of a premonition in our last podcast mm. where we were talking about uh, how the Pope's visit would affect the timing of the the GE, the next GE and everything, like, right? Mm-hmm. And I think uh, someone pointed out that you made a prediction about when the handover would happen, you know, mm. that it would have to probably happen before all of this, like, right? Yeah, before but, but isn't everything. that kind of common, common thinking already? Isn't no, it? but it could still take place uh, after September, mm. right? Before the PAP... Uh, the PAP uh, 70th anniversary oh, thing that, in uh, November. That yeah. means the election will come later, like the following year or something. Like. Yeah, 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 yeah. Correct, correct. Mm-hmm. So, so all the pieces are starting to fall into place. Yeah, right? yeah. And uh, yeah, so it's quite it's quite interesting that, you know, we discuss it, then there's a new announcement that affects how we think about it. And uh, yeah, they, even this one, this is, a, this is a move that also uh, is worth like taking a look closer look at. Uh. Mm. Yeah. So you're saying it's another step on the road to becoming like the CNA guest during the elections? Oh, the Alongside analysis, Eugene uh, Tan, yeah. Uh, no, no, no. I think, I think we, we still bring something different to the table. Uh. I think we do. That's why. I mean, that's why it's yeah, a step. Yeah. Like we will bring something different to the table. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. There's a table there. Exactly. And we'll bring something different. Yeah, uh. yeah, yeah. So it is kind of like a step. Uh. Mm, correct, correct. It's it a is step. a step. It's a step. Cool. But yeah, going back to your feeling, Terrence. Mm. Mm. How you feel? Um, like between like pre-announcement on Monday and now? I mean, not much changes. Uh, you, you kind of, uh, you knew this was coming already, like, right? Uh, but it's just, uh, you know, when the announcement actually happens, that's when, like, you know, oh, it hits you that this is happening, mm. right? Yeah. And, um, the flurry of tributes to Lee Hsien Loong, uh, uh, it tells you that these people have been prepping for this for a damn long time. Right? And not, I'm not just talking about government people, I'm talking about like, mothership or news agencies and all that mm. they already prepared the videos they already like oh okay you know Go ma- videos, milestones I haven't yeah, seen the videos yeah videos of like milestones in, in uh, you know uh, Lee Sien Long's life and I think mothership even did like uh, I don't know whether they used bots or, I mean they used the uh, software yeah. what, mm. but they analysed like his Facebook profile uh, oh yeah I saw that one. so they, they did like a gif of all his profile pictures or something like that and how many selfies he took and what generally what he did on his social media <laughs> so this has been going on I mean people have been prepping for this already like, right I guess I mean it makes sense given that they did make the announcement that Lawrence Wong will take over before the PAP annual conference this year right correct, correct in yeah. 2023 yeah. so I guess as a outlet you probably want to prepare anytime go 
Yeah. Um, but the, not us, uh, we're, we're like caught other way. <laughs> we're like, oh shit, oh god damn it, we got to record a podcast. But what can we do, like a, like a, I mean, yeah, like, there's stuff we could do, but screw it, man. Uh, we react to the news of the day. Uh, and yeah, like, we we try to, actually, we don't really prep that far in advance. I mean, uh, the the most, off the top of my head, the most basic thing is if we could have got Lawrence Wong on a podcast, like, right, before uh, he became... Uh, before he's he's slated to become prime minister, like. yeah, because yeah. now he's gonna be like even busier, damn right? hard to get, like, uh, yeah. damn hard to get, like, yeah. yeah, but uh, so I mean, basically, you're saying no change in feeling, uh. um, not much, uh, not much. Yeah, about you? Same, uh, same, no change. Uh, because I mean, it's one of those things that yeah, it didn't come as a surprise. Maybe it was just a bit surprising that it came now. Mm-hmm. Uh, and apparently, between the time the announcement is made and the swearing in, it is unusually short, like. Oh, one yeah, month. Uh, right, yeah, yeah, because for previous PM, I mean PM Lee, Go Chok Tong, and Lee Kuan Yew, I mean Lee Kuan Yew didn't have anyone to take over. Mm. But the other two were a bit more runway. La. I see, I a see. A bit more, a bit faster. So, yeah, one month. Uh, I think even at the doorstop interview, uh, Lawrence Wong was saying that when someone asked him about the National Day rally, he said his focus is now to for the, for the swearing in. La. Yeah. And he has only a month. Yeah. And he mentioned there's going to be some cabinet Kings, but most of the reshuffles will come after the election. Like. The election, yeah. yeah. And and he said uh, he has asked Lee Sien Long to stay on as senior minister, mm. which he will. Yeah. So yeah, uh, uh, Lee was uh, uh, Lee will still be there, like, right? Uh, Lee will still be there. Uh, correct, yeah. correct. Uh, but but when you know when you when there was the announcement came out and then there was a video that I think um, Lawrence Wong himself put out, like, right? Yeah, the vertical video. Yeah, the vertical. Like, yeah. yeah, yeah. Did it? I mean, it, it struck me, and I think some people online, it struck me as it looked very, there's something very fake about it. It looked almost AI generated. Something about the, I don't know, it's the makeup or the lighting or the filter mm. that they put on his face. It looked quite fake. Did you get the sense? No, I you didn't. Saw it? No? Yeah, I just thought it was like, okay, it's a video that uh, he's doing in some room. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it just looked very. I mean, for an AI skeptic like me, like, right? Yeah. I, 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 you know, I live and breathe like being skeptical, uh, uh, yeah, skeptical yeah. about these things. Yeah. It looked very like something a bit off about it. Like, I felt the the sheen on his face and everything. Or is it just the way he was talking? Also, I mean, uh, people have also pointed out he does have a bit of a. He draws out his syllables yeah. a little bit, right? A bit mechanical, also. Yeah, I mean, but I, I don't, I don't begrudge him. Uh, and and this is after watching a lot of those press conferences where he was really speaking off the cuff sometimes, like, right? It's just his style of talking, like, yeah. right? And and the way he pronounces things that is a little different from an average, uh, what you imagine a typical Singaporean would speak like. Uh, mm-hmm. Is someone who's probably educated overseas or has has you know lived or worked with a lot of foreigners, um, and maybe also you know a little bit of. Um, uh, a bias towards, I would say, a uh, more Hong Kong style of uh, accent to English. Oh, really? I, I feel, I feel. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but that's that's what I feel, right? Yeah. Whether, how accurate it is, I, I'm not sure. But it added, maybe it added to the overall aura of, hey, this video feels very AI generated. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And you remember there was that whole deep fake thing of him like yeah, yeah, yeah. selling crypto. <laughs> so I was like, whoa, shit, these crypto guys are working hard over time, man. Producing these videos for him. Yeah. That was on his Facebook and TikTok and Inst- and Instagram like, everywhere. You mean his video? Yeah, his yeah, video, yeah, video. yeah. I mean, Instagram. it wasn't as high production quality as his slow mo video and yeah. walking to deliver the budget. Like. Yeah. Uh, and and as a but as a content creator, I also have to say another thing. Like, uh, uh, for vertical video, the rule of thirds thing like doesn't doesn't really make sense in this case. Like. You know the rule of thirds where Yes, Terrence, yeah, I know yeah, yeah. the rule of thirds. But it, it works for for horizontal sixteen by nine. Yeah. Or, you know, white screen, whatever. But when it comes to vertical video, it just maybe that's why it made me feel like hey, a bit off at that. Like, like why is he so so why is he like like almost uh squeezed on one side of the screen. Uh, I mean, so, Singapore flag on the other side, yes, but it was just it just added to the overall feel of the video being a bit strange. So maybe for the uninformed, you mm. can just briefly talk through the rule of thirds so you can feel better about yourself or so. Uh, yeah, it's just generally when you watch shows or movies, or anything, generally people frame their shots where uh, a key, the key subject in the in the frame is at the one-third part of the mm. of the video like one third of the horizontal length of the video mm. uh, somehow uh, I think whether it's convention or it's just our, the way our eyes uh, perceive the world uh, that seems to be most comfortable uh, right it brings more comfort to people actually looking at the in some way you also on the third uh, right your face not if they're watching on YouTube yeah 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 we, we do yeah. consciously try to do it I think but for vertical video a lot of it times work, uh. smack in the middle uh, right yeah, yeah, and yeah. that's what over time we've learned while doing more and more videos so 
yeah, just something about the video. It got you know that like in Hollywood, there's whole thing when you tilt when you uh, tilt the camera angle, the Dutch angle, right? And it, it's meant to make people feel a bit off, like something is off about the scene. And uh, the so there was something a little bit off about this whole video, like, based on the choices. Try to unsettle you, uh, Darren. <laughs> He's like, I can stand right in the middle with the flag behind me. No, I'm going to go a bit to the side yeah. because that is the... He said he wants change, right? He wants he, change, yeah. He wants change. He wants so, to unsettle you. Yeah, unsettle you. <laughs> but that's not, what we want. that's not what you want from your first speech, right? When you're, when you're about to take over as Prime Minister. You want to make people feel comfort and, and, and hope for a new age and all that. Right? Yeah, yeah. So I mean, I, I, I learned a fun fact that he's the first Prime Minister born after our independence. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 I mean, we don't have a bevy of yeah. Prime Ministers to, yeah, yeah. to do a comparison. Like. Correct, correct. I think I see some jokes saying that you'll definitely go down as one of the top five Prime Ministers we've ever yeah, yeah, had, yeah, yeah, regardless yeah. of how we yeah. perform. <laughs> they say at least hello, top three Prime top three, Ministers. Top three, top three. Confirm, <laughs> top three. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's pretty funny. Yeah, yeah. So, so I mean, like, um, the announcement, like, the announcement also came, I wouldn't say muted, but there was no big fanfare. Like. I think mm. Lee Hsien Loong posted online uh, on his social media and X as well. He's on yeah. X. Yeah. Uh, just, yeah, something like, okay, this will happen, this will happen, this will happen. Then, I think that night itself, Lee Hsien, uh Lawrence Wong went about his uh, his meet the people session mm. um, in Lim, Limbang, I think. Um and and yeah so so it felt like oh pretty pretty muted and now mm. everything feels like it's just been a formality like like all these checklists of items they have to do la. yeah but nothing I mean you wouldn't you also wouldn't expect a cabinet reshuffle mm. uh when he's sworn in correct uh, I know there's been a lot of questions asked about whether this will speed up or delay the GE mm. uh, there was one uh, interview he did I mean he delivered a short speech and then he answered some questions from the press and I think it was the last question when someone said what are your priorities for, for in the near future and he said oh didn't I already say that yeah, yeah, and then he went on to say like, mm-hmm. so I was like wow a bit of a passive aggression there yeah um, yeah yeah I yeah. think um, he but but you know he is pretty good with, with yeah. uh, off the cuff kind of yeah, yeah, yeah. media and yeah. I think the COVID nineteen, the whole MM, uh, was it uh, MTF. Multi-ministry, MTF multi ministry task force, uh, right? yeah, MMTF, 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 uh, MTF no, is the acronym is MTF, MTF, uh, but multi ministry uh, is one, M- yeah. right? Uh, yeah, he showed, <clears throat> he showed, um, that yeah, he can, uh, not say inspire, but at least give confidence, uh, right? Mm. Make people feel a bit confident about about what we know and what we don't know, yeah, uh, and that's not easy, uh, especially when you're dealing with crises like that. In that sense. Uh, you can say that, you know, he was blooded already, la, right, before becoming Prime Minister, mm. where he was in the hot seat yeah. for one of the biggest crises that the world, I mean, that Singapore has ever faced. And the world, la, the world. The world, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I mean, he hasn't been in politics that long. Yeah. Since 2011 only, you know. Uh, correct. I remember, I remember attending, was it like Southeast Asian Games opening or Youth Olympic Games opening uh, or something? I, I got invited, so I, I went there and watched. And he was the minister that was was opening the games and was he minister already? Or, or maybe I don't. I'm not sure lah. But he uh, was basically the guest on opening the games, giving a speech and all that kind of thing lah. Uh, and I remember, wow, oh, this guy, wow, he's so smiley and so happy. And I was like, wow, who is this guy? Like, he looks like he's just you know here to enjoy the ride lah, rather than be leading leading the charge lah. You know? Yeah. Um. But I, I guess yeah, age plus you know over the years he's had he's had time to build up that capability as well lah. Yeah, and I mean he's been in civil service throughout. Yeah. Um I think his 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 first career uh, first job was as an economist working at the MTI. Mm. Uh and then yeah, it was at the start of the Asian financial crisis. Then he went to MOF in 2002, MOH in 2004. Yep. He was a director of healthcare finance until May 20, 2005. Then he was a principal private secretary to PM Lee between May 25 and August 2008, which I didn't know. Okay, and May then, 2005, you said. Yeah, okay. he was a principal private secretary. Okay. Um, and the principal private secret- secretary is, is still considered a civil servant. He's not a politician, yep. but he's responsible to uh, the minister. And is he right hand, was PM Lee. right-hand man? Right yeah, right-hand right hand man. And then 2008, September, he became the deputy CEO of the Energy Market Authority. Mm. And then the next year, he took over as CEO. Mm. Then he joined politics uh, in 2011. Yeah, and I think he joined politics in his late thirties. Not even, not even. Uh, yeah, late thirties, late thirties, late thirties. Yeah, and I mean co- contrast. I think he's the oldest uh, PM. Uh, PM, yeah, yeah, incumbent PM. Because Lee Kuan Yew was thirty six. Yep. Ko Chok Tong was forty nine. Yeah, like yeah. PM Lee was 
plus, right? Uh, oh, so it, but then eh, PM Lee was fifty plus. No lah. Now he's maybe late forties. I don't know, but I mean, yeah. there's, there's there's a chart somewhere <laughs> yeah, you can chart. find. Everyone has produced <laughs> these charts everywhere. That's day, true. Like. That's true. You're not far but, off the mark. Yeah, yeah, but you know, like going back to what you were saying about the way Lawrence Wong speaks, I actually like the way he speaks. Oh, is it? Yeah, but at the same time, it is one of those ways of speaking that. Uh, how you say that? Because you, you know, like when when you you see leaders around the world, they all have like very strong personalities. Mm. To me, Lawrence Wong, he doesn't have a strong personality, for better or worse. Mm. Sometimes you don't want people who have a strong personality. Yep. But when I listen to him, I'm like, okay, it's it's neutral, it's somewhat assuring. But maybe we just haven't like uh, no, we've we've heard him a lot. It doesn't feel like there's something very unique, lah. Mm. This might just be a personal, subjective take. La. Okay, so of all the 4G ministers who were, mm. you know, rumoured to be the next, yeah. who do you think has that strong personality or that strong so the, way of speaking? The 4G would be Chan Chun Singh, Chun Singh Ong, Ong Kang, Kang, even uh, Desmond Lee, right? At some point. Desmond at some point. Tan Chuan Jin at some point. And then long ago. La. Long ago. Long Heng Sui Kiet. I mean, remember? He was yeah. slated to be PM at first. Yeah. Uh... I would say actually Chan Chun Singh. Chan Chun Singh. Yeah. Could the cottons come yeah. from sheep. Yeah. Uh, I mean, in the sense, when I say a strong personality, it's just something that you hear only you know is Chan Chun Singh. Mm. Uh, and I think it might be the way he speaks his his language also. Uh, but I think yeah, maybe strong has has too many like uh you know like warrior connotations. But you just feel there's something that stands out. Mm. Whereas Lawrence Wong feels like like what you say. I can imagine. Uh, you go into some AI and say, okay, someone who's who's supposed to be stately, yeah, you know, like uh, diplomatic, yeah, and all that, and that voice will come out, la. But you you generally tend towards uh trusting authority, la, right? That's hey, hey, generally you, la, okay. <laughs> what, hey, please, you are if, generally if, more if, deferential to no, authority. No, if, yeah. if I yeah. would would that would we even be doing this podcast? No, no, yeah, but but like, no, no, no I refute you, that. I refute be, that. Okay, okay before you, you interrupt, up, before you back it up, yeah. before you are always into like man crushes like that's your thing right that's you always say that I got this man crush on this guy and all that. yeah who people who yeah, inspire yeah. me motivate yeah, yeah. me like. Be, like it feels like there's a lot of like wow, uh, you know idolization idoli- idolizing of strong men lah you know, in and your thing. strong women. I know when you say I have a woman crush. <laughs> because okay, you, you only talk about hot women, right? You don't eh, talk about women. Eh, eh. <laughs> but you, but you very of, readily. A lot of accusations. No, I though. feel you, you quite readily like, oh, this guy's so great. I have a man crush. Yeah, yeah right, I right. do. Right. You, yeah. Do, you do. Yeah, right. I do. I do. I do. So, but that doesn't mean I'm deferential to authority. Right? Okay, okay, fine, fine. We, we can separate those two things. Yeah. But I'm just saying that maybe that's where someone like Chan Chun Singh, who comes from the military, mm is very used to speaking in a very, uh, you know, I'm an authority kind of yeah, way to think about uh, it. Appeals more to you lah. Because actually to me... Uh, okay, I wouldn't say appeals. Uh. Okay, appeals. I would just say it's a characteristic. <laughs> that, if, I mean, you use, you use the word strong, which is a positive connotation. That's why I correct? corrected myself that ah, it might okay. be too much of a like positive thing. I'm just okay. saying a unique. Okay, maybe okay. unique. Yeah, okay. okay? Unique. <laughs> unique word, Terrence. Relax. Nobody's uh, questioning your masculinity. No, because when you <laughs> fucking pin this brush on me and like make assertions about like my deference to authority, then I'm like, hey, Terrence, yeah, yeah. please yeah. Back, back up. Lah, okay? No, no. What I would say yeah. is that maybe for me, someone in Lawrence Wong's style who is a bit more consultative mm. in how he speaks to people mm. uh, appeals more to me la, mm. than uh, Chan Chun Singh. La. Mm. That's what I would say. La, right? Yeah. Uh, and I, I, I don't... Uh, in fact, there have been news outlets, I mean, a couple of news articles, or at least one I've seen that said that Lawrence Wong doesn't have as clear a direction in, mm. the, in what in his what his vision is for Singapore and everything. So that corroborates with what you're saying, la, right? Where mm. the way he speaks maybe is a bit more like uh, consultative or not so like Strong la, or mm. unique, la, like you unique, say, it doesn't stand out so much. Yeah, unique. But uh, yeah, la, I mean, it's it could be a, a down to a personality thing or so. Like yeah. what, what appeals to you? What has traumatized me in the past yeah. affects what I would want to look for in a leader in the future. And so all, now right? to answer the question that <laughs> I did not answer previously about which style appeals to me, right? Mm-hmm. I'm not saying the way Chan Chun Singh speaks appeals to me. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, I'm just saying that his is uh, the unique one. La. Okay, okay, but yeah, no man crusher. No man crusher. No, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, political man crushers always... Different lah, different because as a politician, there's a lot that I mean, in some way, there's a lot of theatrics lah. Yes, right. Uh, and it's difficult to develop a, a intellectual man crush on someone, man or woman, mm. 
if they are a politician, like, because it almost feels like there's a lot of theatrics involved. Like. Correct. Yeah. But that said, mm. I've had, I've heard people who have worked with Chan Chun Singh or under Chan Chun Singh, whatever, yeah. who's gush of him in that way. Mm. Like, whoa, this guy's super smart super and all. Smart uh, and everything. And I always try and drill down, like, what, what do you mean by super smart? Can you give me an example why you think he's super smart? And it, it always boils down to something about when in a group, he's able to like talk to everyone and gather everyone's thoughts and then put it on a page and then put it in a word cloud or something like that mm. that looks very smart. Like. But I listen to it, I'm like, this sounds like a, this sounds like how my army meetings used to be. Like. And after that, mm. I walk out, I'm like, what the hell just happened? Like, like nothing, nothing took place. Like. Yeah. So I, 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 we are, or at least I don't know about you, like, but I have yet to experience that, that, you know, that Chan Chun Singh, like the, the, the aura around his, his brilliance, like, right? Mm -hmm. So maybe I, I, that's why when you tell me oh, unique or strong personality, I'm like, mm, okay. I mean, I, I still remain mm. a bit more, okay, I reserved. Then do that. any one of them stand out to you as like, uh, or like how, how would you say uh, is a defining trait or like the difference between those that were in the running? Just I mean, in terms of yeah. the, the, their persona and their public uh, image. Right? I think a very big thing for Lawrence Wong was COVID-19. Yeah, yeah. The fact that he headed up those press conferences and then we all laughed about how hits, when you ask a difficult question, then everyone's head would turn and then to him. They'll, be, they'll look at him. I don't, I, I hardly remember him really like turning away or deferring to someone else for an answer. Like, and a lot of times he was, he would have to give the, 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 the messy answer that nobody wants to, to hear, like, right? Mm. And I, I don't remember him shying away from doing that. Like. And I respect that, like, you know? To mm. me, that is strength. Like. It's not about, being strong in the way you speak, but about like when the going gets tough, you can still speak confidently and uh, still reassuredly uh, and not like dismissive or passive aggressive or anything. Like, yeah. yeah. And I mean, I think COVID to, to Lawrence Wong's credit, he that was his, his coming of age, like, right? Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. I totally agree that at, at every point, even when there was the changes of wearing the mask or not wearing the mask, because apparently at one point, he and his team made a decision to to not mandate people wear masks. Yeah. But then when the data showed otherwise, they did a U-turn. Yeah. Um, and even then, right, it never felt like you're listening to someone who doesn't seem like he's he's got conviction. Yeah. So that one, I totally credit him. Mm -hmm. um, but I was coming more from like, and maybe, maybe yeah, maybe it is a big change for a leader to not be like the traditional, you know, like um, assertive type. Mm -hmm. But then on the other hand, just you look at the 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 global situation now with like how how things are developing because I saw pe some people saying that oh you know when Lee Kuan Yew took over it was a much tougher time I don't mm. know man I think now it's like pretty damn tough also mm. uh, the challenges are different like Singapore is facing a whole bunch of different challenges and he, maybe it's also because in my head I'm just imagining you know like like political headbutts you know like going toe to toe with someone yeah. and and the traditional way of like you know mean holding your ground means that you need mm. to have like a a forceful or strong or assertive personality like. yeah there are very different ways to do it correct but just listening to the speeches and and um yeah so it doesn't feel like hmm mm. okay maybe we just haven't seen it correct, correct. maybe what happens behind closed doors uh because i think over the years also as you grow up you realize there are many different styles of leadership yeah right i won't deny that when i was young i was like oh a leader must be like the loudest, 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 loudest person but now i'm like not at all like. yeah, no. in fact sometimes people who talk a lot are the biggest full of shit like, yeah, yeah. right but just as a politician where there's a lot of um like public uh how you say uh, interaction mm. yeah just feel like hmm, how is this gonna pan out like? correct right yeah. and i mean on that you know um recently he was in paris right mm. and he he, came, he met macron uh, the yeah french president and they stood side by side and yeah. what immediately struck me was like oh they are about the same height mm. so then i looked up macron's height i think he's like 176 or 179 somewhere there lah. you know not 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 that tall lah, right not not that tall but especially global averages lah, mm, right? singapore mm. global the singapore average is lower than the global average lah, yeah. so to speak or western yeah. average i don't know but um i think that's also important in terms of like when you go to meetings and all that how actually i mean yeah we talk about politics as theatrics lah, mm. being physically imposing somewhat lah, right yeah and i think lee kuan yu even has even uh, if I'm not wrong, la, right? I think he had, he did mention that about Hing Sui Kiat before. That Hing Sui Kiat is a, has a, is a person with much smaller stature. Oh, he said that? Yeah, I uh. believe so. I, 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 it's in my memory somewhere. Correct mm. me if I'm wrong, anyone on the internet. I'm not 100% sure. But there was some talk about how Hing Sui Kiat's um, smaller stature 
would be might be a disadvantage when it comes to dealing with world leaders and all that, right? Mm. Um, yeah, because you're talking about you know like the Putin's and the, and the Nathan Yahoo's and all that, Nathan Yahoo's all that. Yeah. yeah. So when you meet in person and having that that like what you said, a forceful appearance and all, mm. could actually be an advantage in these kind of negotiations, right? Yeah. So, but, I don't know, man. We'll see. Uh. But maybe that's the old age thinking that needs to evolve. Correct. Correct. Uh-huh. But at the same time. Trump is lining up to fight for the <laughs> presidency of the US and all that. And you know what Trump is like and, and yeah. how it's going to look like, right? Yeah. So, you know, when Trump came and and there was all these photo opportunities with, with Lee, Lee Sien Long and things like that. And Lee Sien Long is very tall. He, 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 he can hold his ground, right? Mm-hmm. So, same for Go Chok Tong. Also, yeah. the swimmer last time and all that can hold his ground. Yeah. Uh, Lawrence Wong, I think, probably shorter than, yeah. than both of them. And you know, PM Lee has mastered the ability to say something, mm. smile, mm. and then immediately go back to like just a uh, stone face. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. know when he delivers the uh, uh, National Day Rally yeah. or any speech, like, yeah. there'll be this smile that comes up mm. and then he goes back. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Uh, Lawrence Wong, I mean, I'm sure we would definitely see more instances of him like, you know, having to really put his foot down. Like. Mm. Uh, but or maybe it's just a different style. Because mm. at COVID, I can, during COVID, I can imagine so many times where there were different opinions. Yeah. And there was no point where it felt like he was weak, lah. Mm, mm, mm. So, so but you yeah. think you think him singing Taylor Swift songs makes him stronger or weaker? <laughs> wow, I mean, I don't know. I'm I'm not the biggest fan of like politicians making videos like that. Ah, okay. I won't deny. Uh, because I'm like, okay, then then your if that I mean I get you want to show your personality and all, but I hope people also don't vote solely on personality. Mm, it's more mm. about character, lah. Uh, and character, you make a Taylor Swift video, you playing guitar doesn't doesn't mean shit to me lah. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, but so, it means a lot to some people lah, right? That, yeah, lah. That, yeah. But if they're voting because Lawrence Wong is cool, can play guitar, <laughs> ride motorbike, all that's also not good, right? Is it he rides motorbikes? Yeah, he rides I motorbikes. found out today also. Oh, is it? How yeah. do you know? Like, like on one of his articles, seven oh. things you didn't know about <laughs> our incoming PM. I'm like, hey, this is he not got a motorbike YouTube license. Video. Uh. <laughs> Apparently, <laughs> he got motorbike license. Must check, must check. Yeah, yeah, yeah. like, uh, yeah, like, there was that one article. Yeah, wow, so, gangster, gangster, gangster. No, wow, I can't. I got motorbike license. <laughs> <hey>. <laughs> 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 so, so I mean, it, it feels like a very different, uh, uh, like, I mean, there is some talk, I mean, even on his, in his speech, he mentioned that, you know, he doesn't claim, I think this was a speech last year at the PAP event. Yeah. He doesn't claim to have all the answers. Correct, yeah. He doesn't claim to know, like, uh, exactly what to do in any situation, but he's always going to be listening first. Like. Uh, okay, okay. Yeah. So, I mean, that, that might be a... Uh, uh, different approach mm. because I was I was reading up and I think Go Chok Tong in his book he did say that listening is important but sometimes you have to be deaf yeah uh, because <laughs> <laughs> wow fucking what? it's That's such an old school old school <laughs> saying <laughs> listening there is good but once in a while I must be deaf yeah. must be deaf so I mean I don't think that let's paraphrasing his quote but he definitely said the word deaf yeah. because yeah. I think when he took over uh, PAP lost a bit of share in the election. Mm. Same mm. when PM Lee took over. Mm. So I think Go Chok Tong, when reflecting on that, he said, yeah, after that, he realized, okay, there, there are times you you need to listen, yep. but at times you need to be deaf. Mm. Uh, because mm. you not all not all opinions are, are worth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so um, you know, on the back of what we had, we're talking about the last podcast about the Pope coming. Yeah. So, how do you think? Do you think this changes? Uh, you know, the date of the election and all that. Yeah. Uh, because this is this is a new piece of information since our last well, podcast. I, I don't think it changes. No. Yeah. Because means, you know, some, because I, I'm saying because some some analysts have uh, said that hey, this seems like a very accelerated timeline. You know. Oh, so you mean even a month. snap election? Uh? Yeah. So some that that word has come up in some headlines of is there a possibility of a snap election like? You know, to build on the goodwill of uh, Taylor Swift and all these things happening, uh, yeah lah, Before before the PAP convention in in November, because someone pointed out that he said in his last speech that yeah, uh, you know, he's one once the leadership handover happens, he's looking to to come to the next. I think paraphrasing, but he's looking to come to the next PAP convention with a refreshed uh, leadership. Oh. Uh, so people are saying, does that mean that election will happen before November, lah, Right. Mm. And, so yeah. So like uh, I I don't think it would change. Like let's say if I I had to make an estimate now mm. before this announcement and now this announcement, it doesn't change my guess, la. Yeah. 
Yeah. yeah. And my guess is October. La. October, okay. Yeah. For you? Like, like let's say if you had yeah. to guess. Uh, uh, if I'm a betting man, and there are a lot of people betting, like they, they, they're they buying the date, the 1505. Oh, yeah, the 40 number of the date <laughs> of handover. And it's sold out already, apparently, uh, for uh. the next week. The next one. But if I'm a betting man, I would say that I would not do it before the Pope comes. Uh. Yeah. You know why? Why? Because you think about it, like, imagine you're setting up your Tinder profile and then you know that tomorrow you're going to have a chance to meet The Rock and then appear on his Instagram uh-huh. and take a photo of The Rock. Yeah. Do you not want to wait until you take a photo of The Rock and then you can post that as your Instagram profile first? <laughs> so if you are, like, an incoming, or at least, like, you're going to become PM, don't you want to go into, like, elections with even having had a photo opportunity with the with the Pope, you know. I mean, I agree with what you're getting at, but yeah. maybe different different starting <laughs> point. La. My my thought was that when you're going into an election, you yeah. never know what could happen, right? Okay. Uh the statistics for the last two PMs was when they become PM, their first election, the percentage of the vote they the PAP get is yeah. last less than the last one. Yeah. So meeting the Pope after an election feels like suddenly some shit goes wrong in the election and mm. you don't do as well as you thought. Uh, I don't think we would change the government, but it just feels like if you're going to be meeting a world leader, uh, maybe don't do it right after election because like, you never know what could happen. No, I'm talking about, so So I think it will happen after, it has to happen after you meet the Pope. Oh, same lah. Yeah, yeah. So, so that's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. so that's why for me, I, I agree with you, oh, yeah, yeah, but the starting yeah. oh, point is not yeah, for the photo yeah, opportunity. Yeah, yeah. Like. To me, it's all about the photo opportunity. <laughs> to me, it's like, <laughs> Is uh is 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 it will be them tactically stupid to not use that as an opportunity to like really buttress yourself as like the chosen one, uh, you know? Mm. I meet the Pope. Someone will get blessed. Yeah. Uh. Once every forty years this. But guy that can comes. still happen like after the election, right? But yeah, but you wanna go into the election with as much ammunition as possible. This guy's literally coming to your so doorstep. Divine divine, yeah, divine uh, ammunition. He can't escape you. He get off his plane, you just wait down there to take photo of him already. Lor. Who's gonna deny you an opportunity to take photo of him? <laughs> right. <laughs> It's, it's, uh, it's, it's a given, uh, yeah, yeah. It's def 100%. And then, yeah, so then it probably won't be after the Pope because there's F1. Yeah, then there's F1. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, but November, like, feels like it's it's holiday, you know, kind of thing. I, don't yeah, know. I think it has yeah. October. Like, October, I think. October, October. That, that's my bet now. Like. Okay. For you also? It feels like, I, I feel like, yeah, like, there's a lot of uh, goodwill, or at least, like, things that have been set in place mm. at the start of this year, you know, Taylor Swift and, and the whole hoo-ha about Singapore as a hub and all that. And then now building, and then there's going to be National Day Parade and, and everything. You know, those really rah-rah people up and then there's the time to to strike, right? Mm-hmm. I and mean, then they, 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 got, they got started on the whole Pritam Singh's uh, court case and everything also at the same time. Yeah, you know? but then there's Isorian's court case also. Yeah, but the one, you know, the one is it's going to be long drawn. I don't think it'll be done even before the elections, uh-huh. uh, yeah. But I mean, there's also Olympics. But Olympics, I mean, uh, Shanti Pereira is going to Olympics, even she's though she injured. recently got injured. Damn, yeah. Yeah, so fucking hope, hope, hope it still goes well. But yeah. I mean, it's not, I don't think we're going to be getting some like like gold medal that is going to bring the country together or something. Like. Yeah. The the odds of that are very slim. Like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I don't think that's going to factor much. Yeah. Uh, I mean, one thing that has come up in discussion is also what's going to happen to some of the current 3G ministers, whether Guys. they will step up to become DPM or SM, yeah. uh, one of whom is Shamugam. Yeah. You know, there's... 3G? He's considered 3G. Isn't he 3 He's 4G. Eh? I think he's somewhere... 3.5. Somewhere between, uh. Uh, yeah, 3.5. He's like a software update. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because he's been law minister since uh, 2008. Uh, and, uh, but, you know, law ministers, apparently we've only had three, right? Three, you know, uh, who is three. And so they, they can serve for 20 years. On a, yeah. So he's 3.5G. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he might... G. I think Shamugam will still be around for a while. Yeah, yeah so I mean, I've, some analysts have said he might become SM. Because mm-hmm. right now there are two SMs who would at least remain on for the near future. Yeah. Then Lee Sien Lung is going to become SM. Yeah. Feels like four SMs might be a bit of an overkill. Okay. Uh, yeah. But then, like, uh, if Lawrence Wong is going to be PM, then who's going to be DPM? Mm, that's the big question. Yeah, right yeah. now, Hing Sui Kat is DPM. DPM, right? We have yeah. two DPMs. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, who knows? Suddenly, Shamugam become DPM. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you never know. So, I mean, those sort of things will be interesting. And the reshuffle, because even, you know, like, let's say, uh, Edwin Tong, he's minister of uh, mm. uh, MCCY, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, imagine if, like, wow, he feels like, you know what? Next year, I'm going to bring Beyonce, Adele, then suddenly change cabinet. <laughs> 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 that is like all the work for Taylor Swift. <laughs> Nothing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, then, yeah. La. So, so, I mean, that I think will be interesting, the, the shake-up. Because, I mean, the handover, the succession planning, we always knew. 
Uh, another thing that, that stood out was like, yeah, I think the only opposition who posted something was uh, Chi Sun Juan from uh, SDP. SDP la, yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Everyone else has, in I mean, in comparison to all the tributes and congratulations for Lawrence Wong and, mm. and PM Lee, yeah, pretty quiet on the opposition side. La. Yeah. I don't know what they should do. I don't know what would be good for them to do. But it was also a bit passive-aggressive, la, right? Mm. Saying that he hopes for more enlightened oh, yeah, yeah, Chi Sun Juan, yeah. leadership. Yeah. 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 So, I mean... Interesting lah, but yeah, like uh, that's why when you started by saying this is seismic news is a seismic news. Uh, seismic or seismic? seismic? I think I say size lah. Seismic. Uh, size, is it seismic, seismic activity. Is it seismic, seismic or seismic, guys? Seismic. You say size, huh? Seismic. Uh, seismic. 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 Uh, seismic. Uh, seismic news. Seismic, okay. Uh, the repercussions not that seismic lah. Uh, yeah lah, yeah lah. But but it is uh, still you know you think about the history. The short history of our country, it's it's always been somewhat associated with Lee Kuan Yew, like, right? Mm. Lee Kuan Yew, I mean, Go Chok Tong is successor, but Lee Hsien Loong was waiting in the wings and Lee Hsien Loong took over. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, that 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 Lee, the Lee family, uh, the influence of the Lee family, you know, seems to be getting smaller, right? Mm. So in that sense, it's it's a, still a big, still a big shake up, like, right? Yeah, yeah. In our country's history. Yeah. But he'll still be SM. So correct, correct, correct. But uh, definitely not the face of the country so so much mm, yeah. Now there's a third third surname lah at four pm. Lu there was Wong. Lee Go Wong. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Lee Go and Wong. Lee Go Wong. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, cool, cool, man. But yeah, you know, uh, speaking of uh, seismic news as well, mm. uh, there was also another announcement that on surface look like looks like it will affect a lot of workers lah, right? But on closer inspection, maybe you know some people have pointed out, eh. Is this really, does this really mean anything, right? Mm. And what is this piece of news for workers? Uh, it is the announcement that um, that came out 15th April, Monday. All employers, mm. uh, I mean, no, so wait, let me get a more more sensationalized uh, mm. headline. Uh, okay, never mind. Uh, basically, come December f- uh, 2024, mm. uh employees will have uh, the ability to request for flexible work arrangements uh, from their employer. Mm. And uh, uh, similarly, the all employers must also have a process for their workers to request the FWAs. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, it was announced, I think uh, there's been a lot of talk over the past one, two years, uh, and they announced this and, yeah, like, they explained the, the process um, and there are certain certain conditions like I mean even flexible work arrangements there are three types flexi mm. place yeah. where you work from outside office flexi time mm. where you work at different timings and flexi load mm. where employees can take uh, different workloads according to their to their pay yeah. uh, and the process is um, yeah so, so I mean before we go into the process like uh, when, when you saw this I mean this has been in the works like it feels like there's been a lot of discussions about it for a long time already right? yeah so, so when you first heard about this like uh well, what what did you think? Uh, I mean, the headlines saying that all employers must have process for workers to request flexible work mm. arrangements. Um, I mean, the first thing that I was asking was like, oh, is this going to be mandated as a rule, or, or what is it going to be, like, Right? Mm. Um, because it sounds it sounds on the surface it sounds like something good, right? You know that that uh, employers must have a process, like, Right. But I guess the devil's in the details. Huh? Like what is so? What happens if employers don't have that process in place, like, Right? Mm. Like, is there is, is there punishments given to them or what? Uh, and and like uh, generally, like, is there going to be any punitive kind of uh, action against employers who don't do this properly, lah? Like, right? Yeah, yeah. So, so I mean, yeah. Even later in the article, they say um, employees should have a process for employees to submit formal requests. Mm. Such as through a work portal or email, mm. and the employees should follow any requirements. Uh, but if there are no stipulations or no processes, the employee could make a formal request yeah. that includes date of request, FWA arrangement, expected frequency duration, reason for request, and if applicable, the start and end date of the arrangement. Mm-hmm. So I think like the changing the the binary thing is like whether it's a formal request or an informal request. Yeah. The moment you make a formal request the employer has to respond. Mm, mm. Um, and they can reject, but this must be based on, I quote, reasonable business grounds and not personal bias against FWAs. Like. Basically, mm. you have a boss who just hates like uh, work from home. Like. Yeah. Uh, so you need to be able to back it up. Like. Yeah. Uh, 
Uh, and you can also reject if it's impractical, if there's no capacity to change. Um, and and yeah, it feels like there are some some guide rails in place. Yeah, yeah. But what 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 like uh, stuck out to you when you went into the details? Uh, I mean, ultimately, there's um, there's not a lot of teeth to this to this uh, guide these guidelines, lah. Right. Mm. Uh, I mean, we, they can call them rules, but at the end of the day, they are guidelines because the only the only way that uh, someone can complain is to TAFEP directly, like, and then TAFEP is to engage with the company and all that, right? Mm. So it's not really like a, a law or anything that, that you know, someone can be punished by. Like. It's basically, yeah, TAFEP just telling companies that hey, you, you should do this and if you don't do it, we will talk to you, like, right? Mm. So, um, and, and so, yeah, you go online and you read about what people are saying about this and surprisingly it's a lot more nuanced than than what I imagined mm. I thought people would be like yeah this one why young is useless la, that kind of thing but actually there was a lot of discussion about why uh, you know not not just about flexi work arrangements la, right? but why certain things that are happening in other countries like uh, proposed a right to disconnect law mm. uh, or even a four day work week uh, why those might not actually even be a a, a good answer to the kind of productivity woes that, that developed nations are facing, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, for example, people are pointing out that, hey, you know, Singapore used to have a 5.5 hour work week and then later... 5.5 day. 5.5 day, yeah, work uh. week. And then now it became... now Then it, uh, in the 90s or something, it became five days, right? Yeah. So we actually saw the transition, I uh, mean, not for ourselves, Early but our parents, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and if that can be done, why not go to a four day work week, right? Uh, yeah, so... But people are saying that, hey, you know, at the end of the day, it's not about whether it's four days or five days, but it's about the fact that th- a lot of times there's an expectation that you've, if you don't finish your work, you got to do OT or you're going to bring home your work and finish it at mi- until midnight and things like that, like, right? Mm. So even if you squeeze all that into four days, the fact that you can be contacted outside of work and everything, it's still it's still the same, like, right? You'll still be, end up working like five days a week. Like. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, that that I would say that that surprised me about the online discussions about this thing, lah, Right? Mm. But for you, like, was there anything that you saw that struck you as a you know an interesting take on this this topic? Uh, nothing that I saw per se. I mean, some people are pointing out that oh, yeah, this is just another useless process that has no meaning, mm. But when I look at it, yeah, it sounds like another layer of bureaucracy. Mm. Uh, because. For smaller companies, yeah. uh, sometimes a lot of the processes that are already in place at bigger companies are a little more flexible. Yeah. You know, when I was working in a corporate, you want to take leave, uh, you have to go through an entire process. Mm. But for smaller companies, it's more like a discussion and like, um, yeah, like if if you still get your work done and all, it doesn't really matter too much as long yep. as it's not being abused. Yep. So in this case, it felt like, hey, is this going to just be a meaningless layer? But I actually think that this is still a step in in uh, in the direction that hopefully we can head. Mm. Because changing to four four day work week, I think in Singapore is gonna be impossible in the near future. Mm-hmm. To just go from five days to four days feels like wow, that is a huge change. Because literally the way industries and all work would have to shift. Mm. So in this case, on one hand, yeah, you're giving more work to the employer and you're making them be the bad guy. But I feel like if it's just kick starting a process that people can take uh yeah, I don't think it's that bad a thing. La. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think it's that bad a thing. I think of course there'll be people who abuse it. Mm. Of course there'll be asshole employers who just are uh, everything reject and it probably some would turn ugly ugly. Mm. But it felt like yeah, it's still it's still a step that I was surprised by. Uh, at least it's formalizing the yeah. idea of flexible work arrangements. La, right? Yeah. Such that you let's say you're a single mother or something like that, you don't have to be so fearful of asking. Like you can ask because uh, it's mandated that you can ask, right? Yeah, and yeah, you don't exactly. have to fear repercussions just for asking. Yeah, which I think, uh, you know, last time was always like that, lah, right? Like, oh, even taking leave and all that, like such a big question mark, lah. Yeah. Um, but I mean, you know, the it's been a while since, uh, COVID and everything, right? And uh, I remember last time every time we meet people, uh, it's in work meetings and all. One of our the favorite 
like icebreaker questions is, hey, you're back to office full time already. Mm. Right? Now, much your less, favorite icebreaker yeah, yeah, question. Yeah, yeah, Everyone is probably like, ah, shut up, like, there's. <laughs> no, I think people like to talk about it. I think people like to talk about it because it's if different they, for everyone. If they have an arrangement that works for them, like, yeah, if yeah, you yeah. go back to office, you're just making them really okay, trauma. Okay. Like. Yeah, but there's still a lot of people who, you know, oh, now it's still three days off, three, uh, two days, at, you know, at home, things like that. Uh, so, they, they, a, a few people are open to talk about it like, and mm. open to hear what other companies are doing also. Mm. Uh, but now, I'm hearing more and more like everyone's just back five days and everything, right? Mm. Uh, you think like, you think maybe people overstated how flexi work uh, would change industries and everything? You think it's it's been overstated and now we're just reverting actually, back to normal? Actually, I don't think it's overstated because, I mean, m- more companies than not, uh, even from interactions with people, because I also like asking the same question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, there seems to be some arrangement. Yeah. I think it's quite rare that I meet someone from a company that all five days have to go back if mm-hmm. if they're not in a front-facing kind of industry. Yeah. Or if they work at a clinic or something, you kind of have to be there. Yeah. Uh, but the the thing that, that, why I think this is definitely something that is, okay, cynical or not, uh, it's, it's in some way, yes, about worker welfare and all, mm. but it also addresses another problem mm. that people in Singapore are getting old. Mm. Mm. Uh, and I mean, they were also quite open about it, saying that part of the reason is because more people are, have caregiving duties. Yeah, correct. Uh, and I think if that is the reason behind it, then this feels like, okay, it's not just about like, oh, uh, the compassionate uh, compassion for worker welfare or anything. Yeah. It's because there's this bigger reason that the government is facing yeah. this bigger issue. So, I mean, if if the motivation is not entirely for worker welfare, but more to solve a pressing problem, but at the end of the day, like what you say, I think the biggest thing is that it accepts that flexible work arrangements is now a part of work. Yeah. We cannot run away from it already. Correct, yeah. yeah. And that, I feel, is like, oh, okay, at least that's that feels like it's a bit more progressive. Mm, mm, uh, which is why I was actually surprised by this. I know even 2022, uh, people were talking, like, um, uh, the Labour Chief, Ng Chi Meng, 2022, said mm. that flexible work arrangements is a key focus of Singapore's new workers' compact. Yeah. This was in 2023, sorry. Mm. Uh, so, yeah, it felt like it was in the works, but yeah, this one, I felt, hmm, okay, la. like, uh, definitely there'll be shit to deal with like requests getting abused rejected and all but feels like yeah the biggest yeah. thing is that it a- acknowledges it yeah and and something I think you, Singapore again we are quite uh, quite unique situation not better but necessarily better but unique like, right in the sense that um, you know our transportation system public transport system is quite robust mm. uh, the islands very small so you really can get from one side to another not that long whether you're driving or taking public transport right um, our internet is very fast, right? Mm. You know, uh, internet is uh, quite fast and quite available in all places. No, like, dead except spots, Tengah, dead except zones. Tengah. In, yeah, except Tengah. And, <laughs> so, yeah, some parts of uh, Lip Chukang and stuff uh, like that, so, like, right? Uh, so, yeah, you know, compared to other places, you know, where you really have to plan your commute very carefully. If not, you're stuck in traffic for like two, three hours on mm. your way back home or on the way to work, you know? Mm. Singapore, we have less of those issues. La, so, um, maybe it makes us a, a real, uh, you know, that's where that's where flexible working arrangements uh, can really make more sense also, like, right? Where we, you know, we just embrace the fact that we're a very connected society and everyone, uh, we, we have uh, easier access to internet than a lot of other places and all that, like, right? Mm. And, you know, we've been preparing for this digital shift, with, you know, with Sing Pass and everything. Mm. So we can do the work that we need to do uh, at, uh, at home. Like. We really don't need to follow what other countries are necessarily doing because they have their own situations with public transport and all that thing as well. Mm. Right? But wh- where's the scepticism, Terence? Uh, they're just in whether there's any teeth to enforce this uh, rule, right? I feel mm. that that's one aspect. But overall, I feel, yeah, like, at least something is being formalized about mm. the idea of flexible work arrangements. It's not seen like a dirty word that you can't say to your boss or in the office. Yeah, right? yeah, I mean, then... Like, I, I saw another article, I think by CNA also, saying that, oh, are flexible arrangements like this going to uh, be good for women or set women back? Mm. Then I'm like, uh, okay, because, I mean, the argument is that, you know, it might enforce gender stereotypes if the woman is expected to take FWA to do caregiving, you know. Mm. Then I'm like, okay, there will always be, like, that the other side of it. And, I mean, this one will confirm have abuse. We mm. all know the wonderful PIC grant mm. that was there last time. It was great for SMEs. Yeah. Until someone got the grant to build a, what? A ring for... Social escort website. Social escort, yeah. <laughs> they got government money. Yeah. 
to build a website for social escorts. Yeah. And then the whole grant got taken away. Yeah. Um, so these kind of things, there will definitely be disputes. Uh, but yeah, I think it feels like, yeah, okay, it's still formalizing it. Uh, so see, like, come December. So how, but how has your, your take on uh, flexible work arrangements changed over your, you know, your career, you know, in corporate world and then working for yourself and everything so uh i think there is definitely benefit to having time to just do work and not be distracted mm. but i also do see a lot of value in people coming together to do work if the work necessitates it mm. like i mean even for us the decision to stop recording from home and yeah. coming here yeah. i think it's brought a lot of value to the podcast mm. and mm. even as a team you know like there is you can't run away from the fact that we are social creatures and that sort of things help la. Yeah. Does it need to be every day from like nine to five, nine to six? That one I don't think so. Mm. Uh, for you? Yeah, yeah. I think uh I think in that collaboration online has become so powerful and robust in recent in recent years, right? Not even like ten years ago. You know, a lot of the tools that we use today, I cannot imagine like them existing. Uh, they they look like quantum leaps in mm. in communication, right? From ten years ago. Uh, you know, using Notion and being able to on the fly see people taking notes and stuff like that. Mm. That's it's just crazy. It may, might be even more efficient than sitting in a room together and just talking and one person taking notes and nobody can read what he's, he's mm. writing, right? Mm. So actually, I think there's um, there's a very strong case for for really like just trying to move towards that that model in the future la, for any company. La. That means fully remote, eh? Not say fully la, but I think definitely a hybrid la. Mm, yeah. yeah, hybrid la. <clears throat> and then real estate also is not getting any cheaper, right? And so, yeah. you know, all the big tech companies and downsizing and, you know, removing tables in the office or doing hot desking and stuff like that. Yeah. Because yeah, sometimes a lot, most, I mean, yeah, meeting, sometimes I think face-to-face is very important. But once the meeting is done, you need to go and send your email. I don't care whether you send it while sitting in the toilet or, mm. or you know, or, or at your desk, right? Unless you are like, yeah, that kind of, Unless you're in that industry where you are required to, you know, be present like customer yeah, facing, yeah, la, yeah. then then different. La. But we are quite privileged in the sense that our work we can do remotely and everything. Yeah. So yeah, we should try and embrace it. And this is not even talking about the apps you can use to sit in on your meeting and transcribe everything and yeah. turn out meeting notes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like right, author right, yeah. AI and stuff yeah. like that, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh so yeah, la, yeah. Uh I think I think it's good to have an arrangement because like uh even between couples and families, you know, mm. it's helpful. La. Oh, well, using Notion between couples and stuff like that. No, fucking <laughs> FWA lah, oh, okay? Oh, oh, oh. Like, as much as I mentioned that me and my wife did like the year planning and year and year, I, we are not one of those couples that use Notion. Notion for board, <laughs> yeah. I know, I know uh, Tristan sent something in the chat that day like uh, about a uh, husband using Notion with his wife. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's thought, not me, man. I thought it was a dick but, uh, you, Of course, of course, of course. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> uh, but <laughs> but that, that's not me lah. That, okay. That's not me. Um, but, uh, I think, yeah, la, like, uh, you know, another problem that we are facing as a country is the low birth rate. La. Mm. Right. Mm. Can you imagine if, like, in future for flexible work arrangements, they say, okay, you know, I need to spend Monday and Friday because that's the, that's our baby making time. La. Happy hour. Yeah. yeah, happy hour. Yeah. Because that is also a problem we are facing, right? Mm. Uh, and if caregiving is one thing, love making is another, man. Yeah. 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 But so, challenges of Singapore. La. The challenges are of developed city. Yeah. Developed city. But uh, but yeah, yeah, man. Uh, so yeah, what is your one short comment of uh, these past few days? Yeah, so so my wait, you have yours. Uh, I can. Oh, yeah, okay. I I, yeah. I have mine. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So <laughs> mine is uh the comment from the last episode uh, about uh where we talked about uh the Pope visiting Singapore mm-hmm. and long time commenter uh but then Hall mm. uh wrote and I mean she did say that it's a bit of a flex so don't mind her mm-hmm. that she went to Italy back in 2016 and managed to catch the Pope speaking at the Vatican on one of the Sundays and and just talked about the experience being very electrifying. Mm. Uh, in, in, I guess, a positive way in the sense like it was chaotic, you know, super noisy. The Pope appeared, then it was silence and then there was there was cheering, praying and people crying. And after that, uh, she also went to the Sistine Chapel because mm. uh, even though it's crowded, uh, she said it was beautiful and that made her download the Bible and read it. Yeah, uh, and end end. she's a self a self proclaimed agnostic la. Yeah, but just to understand what she was looking at, uh, on the walls of the Sistine Chapel la, which which is insane la. Yeah, because you know, so many times you go to these tourist sites, it's crowded as shit, mm. and you almost feel like, what the hell is the big deal about this place? Yeah. Uh, yeah. but in this case, yeah, like, 
interesting lah. Because I I'll be heading to Italy in June. Uh, mm. and yeah lah, Sistine Chapel. So have you have you've seen it before? Like I seen pictures lah. Oh, pictures, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. I seen pictures. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, that was my one short thing. One short comment. Um, yeah, the <clears throat> I think the Sistine Chapel really is quite something to witness uh, in mm. person. And um, yeah, like, just like what we're talking about, being face to face of it is very different from seeing in pictures, uh, right? Yeah. Mm. So you you saw it face to face? Yeah, I think I, I believe I did. Uh, yeah, when I when I backpacked as a student and everything uh, mm. back in the day. Yeah. Um. So. Yeah, the, I think the, but I, I think some of the details still like, seeing the picture is still better uh, Like I, I have like examined like high resolution images of the Sistine Chapel just to look at all the, the finer details of the drawings. Uh. Mm. And to imagine that this was painted upside down that blows mm. my mind. Uh, yeah. mm. The whole the whole setup of it. Mm. Uh, but yeah. Um, cool. I think uh, my one short comment is about the um, the episode that uh, you know that it was was recorded when I wasn't here with uh, you and Sharul. Right? Mm. And uh, yeah, there was a bit of a, quite a lot of comments about it and everything. But I do want to point out one of the more um, positive ones about it where uh, Jungle Jimbo, long-time listener, said that he enjoyed the variety of Sharu providing a female co-host voice on the Yalabad episode, right? Mm. Uh, and yeah, that actually, that's really something that we don't have a lot of, right? Mm. Female voice uh, on a podcast, which mm. we are trying to, to, to get more guests who are willing to come to speak and all that, right? Mm. But for you, how did it feel like, uh, you know, getting representation on the podcast and, and everything? Uh, I mean, I think getting someone from a different background or profile or demographic is always good. Because so many times we talk about stuff yeah. that, uh, yeah, I mean, one thing we spoke about on a previous episode was a survey that kind of like said that 60% of Singapore men feel that the push for feminism is discriminating men. Mm, mm, mm. Uh, so we know we're two guys. So getting an external perspective is useful. Mm, mm. Then the next question is whether that perspective, that, that external person or uh, the, the guest can actually give uh, or add to the discussion mm, or provide mm, insightful mm, feedback. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, so we're definitely going to do more of that, getting yeah. more guests on. Yeah. Uh, more co-hosts, I guess. More mm. diverse co-hosts. Yeah, more diverse co-hosts. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But we, we've, I mean, the, the, the favourites will always be there, like, right? Yeah, yeah. The, the Rishis and the Andes. Andes, yeah. Because yeah. 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 I think it's important that a guest comes on and they do their homework. And embrace the format, like, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like, back up what they say with like, uh, Evidence and points Evidence. and notes, lah. Yeah, correct, correct. I agree. <laughs> yeah. I agree. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, but yeah, there's a you know a good positive to come out from, uh, you know, a podcast that I wasn't part of, lah. Right? Yeah, 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 correct, correct. But cool. Uh, and what is your one shock thing? Uh, my one shock thing is a is a sports phenomenon that I only uh, came to be aware about last week. Ah. Uh, it is the phenomenon of Caitlin Clark. Oh, yes, yes, yes. You heard right. Yeah, yeah. Blood, the, right? the, so, yeah. I, I had no idea, but I only, I can't remember how I saw it, but it is it, it, like, um, so sh- the college, the the WNBA draft just mm. got done this past Wednesday, Monday. Yeah. And she was number one on the pick. Yeah. And her background is that she was a college athlete and like, I think undisputedly the, 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 the highest scoring college basketball player, men and women yeah. of all time. Yeah. Uh, she single-handedly made the college basketball, women's college basketball, like one of the most watched sports competitions in the US. I think mm-hmm. the final of the NCAA Division I uh, women's basketball where her team played against another team was the most watched basketball final since 2019. Yeah, yeah. Uh, including men's, including NBA. La. Yeah. Uh, and it, I, was like, I was like, who the hell is this person? And yeah, mm. she's just a very talented basketballer mm. that has drawn a lot of attention to the WNBA and yeah. is now going to be playing in the WNBA. Mm, mm. Uh, and yeah, she she can shoot three-pointers. She can do like layups. She's she's a point guard, I think. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And interesting because because every once in a while you get this these athletes that really elevate a sport. Mm. Um, of course, you get the some of the ex players who say that oh she's not that great lah. When yeah. she goes to WNBA, she'll get she'll get destroyed lah. Mm-hmm. But still, feels like I've never been interested in WNBA before. Yeah, and I'm eager to see how that pans out lah. Yeah, there was a lot, there's been a lot of buzz about her mm. entry into the uh, professional basketball, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah lah, I, I think. 
it, it points to, I mean, the, I think women's basketball needed this yeah. moment. Uh, they needed someone to, to they, they made, like, you know, the college tournament very exciting mm. this year. Mm. Everyone was watching it. Uh. Yeah, and the team yeah. still lost. Uh. Yeah, still lost. Yeah, they still didn't lost. win, but yeah. yeah, yeah. But, but now we see uh, what's the next stage. Of dominating, the yeah. So interesting, uh, interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, what about you, man? Uh, funnily enough, my one shot thing is also from World Basketball. Mm. Uh, but it's actually from a podcast by the you know former player JJ Reddick, which I highly recommend. Uh, I think I can't remember what's the name of the podcast, like Three Old Men or something like that. Uh, the Old Men and the Three. Mm. <laughs> Sorry, The Old Men and the Three. Uh, but yeah, he spoke to a player that, um, you know, from my era watching basketball, Ray Allen, mm. uh, very one of the legendary three-point shooters of the game, like, right? And it, it was just this segment where he talks about how Ray Allen now teaches jump shooting, jump shooting uh, basketball. And so Ray Allen goes into, I mean, he's a legendary three-point shooter, but he talks about how he coaches kids to learn how to shoot the basketball properly, like. Mm. And uh, what was interesting, they really thought about the mechanics of the hand when shooting a basketball and which parts of your hand should be touching the basketball as it as it leaves your hand and everything. Mm. And uh, yeah, I mean, these are things, I mean, I, I play basketball recreationally for very long already, but I don't think about some of these things that they, they talked about in oh, here. Really, like, yeah. uh, for example, they say like when you when you want to throw the a baseball, for example, you never, you, you always throw it, holding it in like in the, you know, with your fingers and maybe the the tip, the top of your palm, like, right? But the bottom of your palm almost never, like, never touches the thing. And that's because once, if if your bottom of your palm is involved in the spin of the ball, uh, it's not really, you 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 lose control, your wrist lose control, yeah, it becomes your arm that controls it, like, right? Oh. So you want to isolate control the ball in only in your wrist. And so the principle is the same for basketball, where you sh when you want to shoot the ball, you never let it, like, touch the inside of your palm all the way. You only keep it at your fingertips. So he's, oh. he's like telling kids, like when you watch them play, it's literally because when they play with real basketballs, it's too big for kids. Their hands are not developed enough. So they will end up developing a very bad habit of throw, heaving the ball with the entire hand, and yeah. including the, the inside of their palm. And then they carry that habit on to their later years as they grow bigger and older. And then so you see a lot of like, not necessarily NBA, but college players who still can't shoot free throws properly, you know? They're heaving it from their chest or something like that. Oh. So he's saying that, you know, if you want to teach kids how to play properly, don't give them a real size ball. Give them a smaller ball that fits their hand. And then you really develop a technique so that when they grow into uh, the proper basketball, they carry that technique on without without uh, developing the muscle memory of heaving it because they can't, they can't, heave, they can't heave the ball uh, they don't have enough strength to heave a real basketball. Oh. So it was damn interesting. And then, and, and, yeah, like, it made me realize that, yeah, you know, a lot of times when we talk about teaching children or that, you say, just throw them the deep end, you know, go and like, just give them the, the big ball, don't bother buying the small one, that's for small kids and kind of thing. But actually, yeah, there's a lot you can learn by, you know, watching the, how their strengths and weaknesses first, and then working on them before you let them progress to the next stage. Huh? Yeah. Actually, it's like football also. Because, mm. like, you, even if you take, like, school training for football when you're young, yeah. you know, they ne I don't know how it is now, but they never teach you how to kick a ball. Yeah, yeah. And just, then you end up tonjoling, you know, yeah, you need yeah, your yeah. toes yeah. to yeah. whack. Exactly. And, and I always used to wonder when I was young, I was like, how do these professional players, they make it look so effortless and the yeah. ball goes across the field. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nobody taught us. Then you just mm. have to figure out, like, then your kicking technique is just shit. Like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you have to make up for it with brute force. Yeah. And it just becomes very messy. Like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, so, that's interesting. Huh? So interesting. And he says, like, you know, like, even as a professional, sometimes you're on the court, then you're shooting balls, and then you realize, hey, something's like off or that. Something off about my form today. Something muscle memory is a bit off. He says that he'll just stop whatever he's doing and just go to the free throw line and just keep doing the same drill until he gets the muscle memory back. Huh? Oh. So he says that that's his technique of like resetting his muscle memory. But during a game, cannot lah. No, I mean not during a game lah, during practice lah. You during, know, there's always uh, like sometimes during practice or like, hey, something off. off about my stroke uh -huh. or something off about the way I kick and all. He said there's always, you, you, your body knows and you just need to get back to what you're very familiar with, reset it then then go back to it wow. again. So I even I learned stuff from it that I was like, oh, actually, that makes a lot of sense. Like, so yeah. next time you're playing recreational, you stop the game. Guys, guys, guys <laughs> I, need I just go, need to go to the free throw line. <laughs> Uh, for 30 yeah, minutes, yeah. Yeah, everyone's just waiting like, what the fuck, Terrence? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can you hurry up or not? Uh? Yeah, yeah. But yeah, la, that, that, it reminds <laughs> you that yeah, la, a lot of times you have to think uh, what's age appropriate for your children also mm. to learn and how to learn and stuff like that. Like. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, interesting. Interesting, yeah. Uh, but yeah, that's, mm. the, that's the end of the pod, man. Cool. Uh, cool. Thanks for listening, everybody. And mm. remember, 
If you enjoyed this podcast, just follow us on our social media. Follow us, hit subscribe on Apple, Spotify, leave a rating and tell one person you know who may not have heard of us. Yeah. And if you want to work with us, uh, you know, check out ministryoffunny.com. Hell yeah, man. Yeah. And uh, so, yeah, welcome to the PM Wong era. <laughs> not yet, uh, not yet. Soon, uh, soon, 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 soon. Uh, a month, a month. Yeah, yeah less yeah. than a month. Uh, but yeah, thanks for listening, everybody. <laughs>